Welcome to Great Verses in 2024. Happy New Year. My name is Chuck Butler, and I serve in the areas of arts and apologetics. We're in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11 today. Nehemiah, cupbearer to the king of Persia, hears discouraging reports about his Jewish homeland. Jerusalem is in ruins, and the people are discouraged, so Nehemiah weeps, mourns, fasts, and prays. God responds to Nehemiah's prayer. The Persian king permits and provides for Nehemiah's return to Jerusalem. Here's his prayer in the Amplified Version. Please, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and the prayers of your servants who delight to reverently fear your name. And do make your servant successful this day and grant him favor in the sight of the king. New seasons in life can be challenging for each one of us. For Nehemiah, the repair of the walls of Jerusalem may have seemed undoable. His grief concerning the state of the city may have stood in his way. His role as a cupbearer to the king, though an important one, could have shaken his faith to pray this bold prayer for a freedom to move forward and for a provisional breakthrough. The need of disheartened people may have also seemed hard to overcome. They needed a place to rediscover God, to learn more about him, to feel both safe and at home, and to worship him. This new year, I'm reminded of God's faithfulness years ago as he placed a burden on both my wife's heart and mine, plus the heart of a godson of Queen Elizabeth, Michael, Richard, and Struther Gow, Calthorpe III, also known as Mickey. We wanted to see a place of outreach birthed in the heart of London, and we searched diligently for the perfect venue. Carol and I were brand new missionaries to the UK, and Mickey was a young believer as a result of the worldwide Jesus movement that is in fact still going on today. We long to transform a place into a warm and welcoming oasis for dialogue about Jesus. The ministry of Alpha, which we now offer here at Calvary, also had its beginnings in London back then. British people from all walks of life were hungry to find answers regarding the existence of God. Carol suggested to Mickey, what about right here in your garage under your flat? Mickey replied, sorry, there's a long-term lease on the garage and Lord so-and-so has his Rolls Royce parked right here year-round. As we descended the stairs into the impossibility of its use and staring at that Rolls Royce, we prayed for God's will in South Kensington to manifest. The very next morning, the phone rang in Mickey's flat. It was Lord so-and-so's chauffeur calling to break the very sad news that the Lord had in fact died in the night. And if it wouldn't be too much trouble, the family would like to break the lease and collect the car that very day. As it was being driven away, we each grabbed a broom and reverently began to sweep the floor of what would become one of the most frequented venues in central London for years to come, in which one could discover a relationship with Jesus over a simple homemade meal. It was called the kitchen. Remember, many things stood in the way of Nehemiah, and for us there in London. What might be standing in your way today? Broken down walls that need to be restored? Permissions that need to be granted? Provisions yet to be supplied to you. Are you or others you know deeply discouraged? Will you find a way back home and will that home once again feel secure? Or maybe for the very first time it will become a place where Jesus is both shared and worshipped. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Why not pray that bold prayer of Nehemiah's today for God's enabling for you to move forward and for a provisional breakthrough? even now as you step away from this video. May Jesus turn things around for you in this new year. That's my prayer, and it's our faith community's prayer for you in 2024. God be with you, and Happy New Year.